What's cooking sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Raham and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of Oslo in Norway. In this video, we'll be going over five cramming secrets or principles which are scientifically proven to be effective when it comes to studying. However, the same principles can also be applied to the act of cramming and I'll show you how. Now, before we get on with the video, here's a small disclaimer. So, I'm by no means endorsing the act of cramming, right? Because numerous studies and obviously tons of research has shown that how cramming is not effective when it comes to studying. However, let's be realistic, right? Life happens to all of us. Sometimes we're just not motivated or some other external factors happen and we're not able to study for exams as we would have hoped for. And in scenarios like these, you obviously have to turn on the cramming mode in order to get the best possible results and clear your exams. Now, this has happened to me. And if you're watching this video, it has probably happened to you as well. Now, having said that, let's move on to five cramming secrets which will help you ace your exams even if you haven't studied for it. Now, what exactly does evidence and science say about the act of cramming? In 1978, researchers found that by cramming, students were able to perform well on an immediate test. However, that also resulted in a much steeper or much more exponential forgetting curve. And this was proven because in a second test, two days after that initial exam, these same students who did cramming or who crammed for their exam uh, for had forgotten almost 50% of the material that they were initially able to recall on the first test compared to the students who only forgot around 13%. And these were the students who had been practicing active recall and spaced repetition. So the point being that cramming is not really efficient for your long-term retention, but being realistic, we know that cramming can be um, relevant during certain times in our lives. So let's have a look at those five simple steps which can optimize the art of cramming. Firstly, let's talk about the method of loci, which is more commonly known as the memory palace technique. Now, it's an established scientific fact that how context can unleash memories and remind us of things which we haven't thought about in multiple years. And this is mainly because our spatial and visual memories are much, much stronger. For example, this has happened to almost all of us that suddenly a sight, a smell or a sound reminds us or brings us, takes us back to like memories which we haven't thought about in a while. Now, why exactly does this happen? And what exactly is the memory palace technique? This technique goes back to the ancient Greeks and involves associating mental images with physical locations in order to cue memories and emotions. Now, let's say you're trying to memorize the different medications used to treat heart failure. Now, in this scenario, you can imagine storing different medications in different parts of your home or maybe other places that you know really well and take an imaginary walk or a tour through that very place. And this will help you cue memories. So, for example, I personally also like to add like an imaginary story in order to make it a bit more spicy and you know I just add some masala to the story or to the to this entire process of the, of the method of loci. So for example I say that okay I have I, I have experienced a hard brain because my heart or my love has apparently failed. So I go to the bathroom to shed some tears and bathroom starts with, starts with a B and this reminds me of beta blockers. So that's the first medication. Secondly, we move on and I'm, while I'm crying inside the bathroom I suddenly see this deck of cards which I have placed inside the bathroom and I start playing with the deck of cards, you know, just shuffling those cards. And while shuffling, I come across a card, Ace, and this reminds me automatically of Ace inhibitors. Now, once this is done, I suddenly get an urge to pee, and this also reminds me of loop diuretics. And mind you, the memory palace technique is also the most commonly used technique amongst uh, memory athletes around the globe. So it might take a few minutes or like a few days for you to get used to you using this technique, but once you're into it, it's gonna be absolutely worth it. Next up, let's talk about mnemonics. Now, mnemonics are essentially any tools which help us remember information that we are trying to learn. And the word mnemonics is actually derived from the word mnemosyne, who was the ancient Greek goddess of memory, like in ancient Greek uh, methodology. We humans learn patterns, songs, sentences, rhythms, and you know, rhymes much more easily compared to just you know simply sitting down and trying to remember certain informations. So, in the context of cramming, what you can do is that you can sit down and you know just create a simple mnemonic which will help you personally remember certain information. And this technique is effective because we humans remember songs, patterns, rhythms, and rhymes much more effectively compared to, you know, just sitting down and staring at the information that we are trying to learn. And in the context of cramming, the best part about mnemonics is that you can either create your own mnemonics for the information that you're trying to learn, or secondly, every single mnemonic is just a single Google search away. So you can find mnemonics for almost every piece of information that you're trying to learn on Google. And this will surely help you 
remember anything that you're trying to learn for your exam, which is only a couple of days away. For example, if you're trying to learn, I don't know, the Krebs cycle, you could use this mnemonic called, um, can I keep singing songs for my Oscars, which stands for citrate, isocitrate, ketoglutarate, um, succinate, fumarate, malate. I, I don't remember the Krebs cycle, but the point is you can use mnemonics for anything that you're trying to remember. Also for anatomy, like stars, to remember the brachial plexus or the posterior cord of the brachial plexus, which I personally found to be extremely difficult. So this mnemonic stars, which stands for um, upper subscapular nerve, thoracodorsal nerve, axillary, radial, lower subscapular nerve. It, it, this made this process of remembering the brachial plexus much, much more easier. So the point is in the context of cramming, you can use these mnemonics to remember the information or the material that you're trying to learn and ace your exams. So the method of loci and mnemonics come under the memorization aspect of um, cramming. And now let's move on to the understanding or the comprehension component of the art of cramming. And firstly, let's talk about filtration. And this is where Pareto's law also comes in. So what exactly is Pareto's law? Now this law states that 80% of the results or 80% of, of the outcomes come from 20% of the input. And the main problem during cramming is that there is tons of stuff or tons of work to do in the shortest possible time. And hence it is absolutely crucial that we filter out any information or any material of the curriculum which is not important or which will not be the decider for us passing or failing our exams. So we need to use the Pareto's law and identify the 20% which will give us 80% of our results. And the main or the real question over here is that how exactly are we supposed to do that? And the answer to that is actually quite simple. One word, lectures, guys. So we need to focus on the lecture PDFs and the lecture PowerPoints and exclude anything else that is not in the lectures. And this is mainly because whenever our professors or teachers make their PowerPoints, they make sure that they include the key principles or the key points from for that particular topic into their PDFs. And since mostly it's the professors or your teachers which, re which write your exam as well, or which make the questions for your exam to be more precise, it's gonna be very, very uncommon or rare that your professor will ask you something that they haven't talked about in their own PDFs or in their own PowerPoints as well. However, a lot of times it also happens that the lecturer's PDFs, um, they include information which is not really necessary to know or really important to know for passing your exams. And hence, you need to identify that information and you don't just discard everything that is not important for your exam. So the point being that you should exclude anything that is not in your lecture and secondly, exclude anything from within those lectures which is not really important for your exam. And instead, focus on the bigger chunks from those lectures in order to develop a certain understanding of the material or the course that you're trying to learn and you know just not lose the, the, the forest from the trees. Now once you have filtered out or isolated the exact information that you need to know for your exam, the next step is condensation. And the idea here is to condense an entire topic into one single A4 sized paper or if you're using your iPad, then you want to just condense that entire topic into one single page of your iPad. The way I like to do this is by making spider diagrams and mind maps. Now what exactly is a mind map? The concept is quite simple. So you have your main um, concept or topic in, in the middle and then you have all these branches from those from that one single topic and then you have those and then you have sub branches from the branches which then again go back to the main concept. This works amazingly well in the context of cramming because of three reasons. Firstly, it condenses the entire information that you have to know into one single piece of paper in front of your eyes, instead of, you know, just mindlessly scrolling through hundreds of PowerPoint slides, which will surely increase your nervousness and anxiety two days before your exams. And that's the last that last thing that you want um, when you're cramming. Secondly, it also aids memorization through spatial recognition, where we develop these mental images in our brains of where these different ideas are located. So it's sort of like method of loci. So if you're on your exam, you know, and just trying to recall something that you have studied for, then you can close your eyes and you know, try and recall, okay, that this piece of information was located on, let's say, the top right corner of my A4 size paper, where I condensed this entire topic. And hence, this will surely, or not surely, but like increase the chances of you actually remembering that information, you know, just acing your exam through cramming. And thirdly, yet most importantly, it helps us create connections between different topics and concepts and hence, helps us in developing the bigger or understanding the bigger picture when it comes to a certain topic. And this is extremely important because as I said previously, you, you don't want to miss the forest from the trees. 
Once you have done the first two steps, filtration and condensation, you can move on to active recall and start testing yourself on whatever material that you know in order to remember that for your exam. For example, look at your mind maps, you know, look at the base of your tree or the main concept and start recalling or trying to think about the, or brainstorming around whatever you know about that topic. And then mark the branches that you were not able to recall in order to, you know, just have a look at them later on. Now, obviously due to the lack of time in this entire cramming scenario, you don't want to be spending too much time on, you know, really thinking hard about whatever you're not able to recall. Just think about it for like five seconds and if you're not able to recall it, then just have a look at the answer or the branches that you have made for your active recall uh, mind maps. And then we also have the most classical way of practicing active recall, which is going through previous exam questions or past papers, you know, just having a look at the questions and trying to recall what the answer is. And again, don't spend too much time on, you know, really thinking hard about the answers. Just think about it for like five seconds and then, you know, just, and then just look at the answer for that exam question. And this works amazingly well because the same exact previous past paper questions end up on your exam as well, just formulated in a different way. So this is going to make sure that the key ideas or the main principles and concepts really stick with you for your exam when you're cramming and help you ace your exam. Now that's a wrap for today's Sapiens. I hope you found the video useful. And since I mentioned active recall, you might want to check out this video where I talk about how exactly we can take active recall and space repetition to the next level using Notion. Thanks for watching this one. I'll see you on the other side. Peace.